Now we'll look at some of the ways governments can intervene in markets to deal with the problem of externalities. These include taxes, subsidies, and outright bans. In general, economists dislike bans as a means of dealing with external costs. Banning pollution might sound like a good idea, but such a ban would consume scarce resources. The resources needed to produce pollution-free electricity or pollution-free cars are so great that few scarce resources would be available for other activities. People may prefer to accept some pollution and more goods rather than less pollution and fewer goods and services. Zero pollution is not then an optimal level of pollution. So one alternative possibility is taxes where there are external costs and subsidies where there are external benefits. Uh, one possible justification for subsidies is in research and development. Uh, surprisingly, one industry which creates problems for the environment is agriculture. Uh, it's been estimated that something of the order of 13% of the contribution to global warming in Australia comes from the methane produced by animals. Research and development has led to the production of a vaccine to prevent the development of methane. The animal is injected, it reduces methane gas by killing off the bacteria. The bacteria is also feeding on the food which the animals are consuming. So as a result of the injection, you get A, less methane gas, and B, bigger and healthier animals. So it can be argued that the benefits outweigh the costs of the research and development that's going on, but no individual farmer could afford the costs of the research and development. In our previous example, the marginal external cost was a euro a unit. If we impose a tax on producers of one euro, the effect is to raise marginal costs and shift the supply curve until it coincides with the marginal social cost. The result of that is that output of each of the firms is reduced until marginal cost equals marginal revenue. And that will mean that the level of output now that they maximize their own welfare is QSO. But now this private optimum is the same as the social optimum and the reduction in output raises the price from PPO to P. SO. So the principle is that the tax should equal the size of the external cost and by doing so we've restored the identity between the private and social cost and the market is once more effective. Now we can consider what happens when there are external benefits in production. Here the marginal external benefit leads to marginal social cost being less than marginal private cost. And this has led to the situation in which we have too little output in order to maximize social welfare. Then the logic is to give a subsidy to producers equal to the marginal external benefit. That reduces production costs and shifts the supply curve down until it coincides with the marginal social cost. Principle is the same as with taxes. We restore the identity between private and social cost and now the level of output and the price which is optimal for the firm is the level of output and price which maximizes social welfare. Now, taxes and subsidies can also be used if the externality is in consumption. It doesn't matter whether, say, a tax is on the consumer and applied at the point of consumption, or whether it's on the producer and is an addition to production costs. As we saw when we discussed taxes before, the incidence of the tax is partly on the consumer and partly on the producer, the proportions being determined by the elasticity of demand and supply. So taxes and subsidies have a part to play in dealing with externalities. 
practice, governments have concerns about other goals also. So, for example, sometimes tax levels reflect a desire to raise revenue, and the size of the tax that maximizes government revenue may not be that which is optimal for dealing with externalities. But in principle, taxes and subsidies are a method of dealing with the externality problem that we've looked at.